Good morning, church family, and good morning to all our guests for worship. We are glad to welcome you to the United Church of Montbello. I'm Reverend James Fother. I'm pastor here, and on behalf of our officers, our members, and friends, we say welcome to all of you worshiping with us today. A special worship service awaits us, and we'll get started on very shortly, but we want you to enjoy the whole thing. Stay tuned till the end, and we'll share in our giving and invitation time after Reverend Dr. Anthony Scott's sermonic wisdom on transition, breathe, push, transition. These are the three movements in worship that undergird it that we'll hear from my colleagues, Reverend Tandy Way Dale Ferguson and Reverend Nicole LaMarche on, and of course, Reverend Dr. Scott. And Today, uh, you get to participate in the annual meeting of the Rocky Mount Conference of the United Church of Christ, as I have through this, this week and into this worship service this morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name. So I say to you, come to church, come to church, come enjoy church this morning. And I'm grateful to Brother Cephas and our choir for helping to welcome us to church this morning. Amen. For we've come into this house to worship God. Amen, amen, and amen. We are grateful to uh, Cephas Howard and members of our choir, including there you saw Sister Silka and, and Sister Red and Sister Afalaka and Brother Danan all together uh, <clears throat> glorifying God. And uh, we are grateful this morning as we move into worship, a blessing for mine soul, spirit, and body, a full embodiment, we remember <clears throat> the tragedy and the grief uh, of, of those who were affected by the shooting in Boulder. Uh, so uh, we will push with Reverend Nicole Namarsh today. And uh, today we will breathe with Reverend Tandy Waydale, um, <clears throat> Ferguson, and she will help us with the help of her precious, precious little one. And of course, Reverend Dr. Scott will knock it out of the park for us and bring it on home with transition. For that's a next step for every congregation. For ours too, we'll figure out how to transition now from uh, pandemic time into time where uh, we're able to do more because of full vaccinations um, uh, amongst us 
amongst uh, many, many of our members at uh, United Church of Montbello. So this morning, um, I want to just invite you to enjoy and to um, experience the worship service of the Rocky Mountain Conference, United Church of Christ. Amen. Good morning, Rocky Mountain Conference, and welcome to our annual celebration worship experience. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, know that you are a beloved child of God and you are welcome at God's table. This year at our annual celebration, we have been exploring what it means to be church anew, a new meaning in a new or different and typically more positive way. And so this morning is an experiment in worshiping in a new or different way. Rather than a sermon preached by a single voice, the word will come through short documentaries from people across the conference. And it will also come through you, whether you are gathered at home or whether you are with your community, you'll be prompted throughout the service to pause and reflect on how what you have heard relates to your own experience. And rather than the usual order of worship we use on most Sunday mornings, this service will move through three different sections entitled Breathe, Transition, Breathe, Push, and Transition. The basis for these three sections come from Valerie Carr's book, See No Stranger. We chose Valerie Carr's work as the grounding for our annual celebration, not only because her vision of revolutionary love is incredibly inspiring, but also because she lays out a clear and compelling path on how each one of us can practice revolutionary love in our own lives. She has created what she calls the revolutionary love compass that moves in three directions, love of self, love of others, and love of our opponents. It is my hunch that learning to love in all three of these directions just might have something to do with being church anew in this day and in this time. As I was recently re reminded by Reverend Ann Dunlap at the ordination of Mallory Everhart, our call is to be faithful to the one who calls us. And the way of the one who calls us is revolutionary love. And so as we enter into worship this morning, and turn our attention to what it might look like to practice revolutionary love. Let us remember these words of Paul in 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Let us worship together. Amen.
Amanda Gorman wants Breath and surrender are intimately connected. And in many ways, when we exhale, we're surrendering our entire life. And when we're inhaling, we're receiving it again. And I think that's a profound act of vulnerability and surrender. One of the first things our babies do when they come out is to breathe. It usually comes with some crying, right? <laughs> No matter how much we say we want things to change, no matter how much we say we want to welcome new people, no matter how much we say we want to grow, let's be honest, we don't always want to do that. Sometimes we want what's being birthed to stay inside because that's familiar and it's safer and there's no risk of tearing. There's no risk of, <laughs> I mean, with babies, holy moly, our whole lives are changed. And if as a church, we're birthing something new, our whole existence will change. And it means we can't be comfortable in the ways we were before. It means we can't put ourselves first in the ways we did before. Um, all of a sudden, when I became a mother, I had a person who needed me completely. So there's, there's a risk that happens and, and all of a sudden resources aren't focused on me. Time is not focused on me. It is directed in another way. And so I right. wonder as church, if we're going to push, if we're going to be prophetic, if we really want to birth something new, what comforts are we giving up? What comforts do we have to give up? What risk do we then have to take? I mean, pushing in labor, like not, not everybody survives it, right? Like this is the reality. Um, and not all churches survive the risks that they take. But when we do, what is birthed, I think is just, is a miracle. Yeah, you're a miracle. You are. And in our experience of life and our orientation to that life just totally shifts. And we encounter vulnerability, but we also experience our strength and our strength together and our reliance on God and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And what's birthed has a life of its own. Oh, oh.
know, just gets me the most. Like, really, when something terrible happens, there's a window of possibility that is unique because of the circumstances where things that weren't possible before become within reach in a Holy Spirit kind of way. And we might say that's resurrection, you know, that the tomb, we're, we're pushing it open for other things to happen. And so in our community, we're organizing for a gun buyback and the reason it's able to happen quickly is the push that the urgency of the pain has brought us. And so we feel like that's exactly what we're doing. We're gonna push so that the pain of this day is not what comes out of it, that, that that's a movement comes out of it that reduces gun violence here in Boulder County and beyond. And that the pain of that day helps us know what we can do when we collectively decide that we can do something. Before this and, you know, the ongoing conversation of this year and the movement for Black Lives and what does it mean for public safety and, and thinking about policing, knowing it's started as a slave patrol. And I preached a sermon around, I'm convinced it can't be reformed. And, and then here I am calling our Boulder Police Department, making relationships and connections for our gun buyback. And this feels like, oh, I can, can I? Yes, we can, we can have a view that holds all of this where it feels it pulling us, right? But there's an expansiveness that comes with that where I can be in relationship with you and value you and also believe the thing that you're a part of needs to be totally revamped, you know? And so that's just one example where I think work, ministry, building beloved community within our walls and beyond is the, you know, the, those things that stretch us beyond binaries. Like yeah. I can be in relationship here and I can be in relationship here and I can hold this stance and I can hold that stance. And I think, you know, that, that third way that Jesus often modeled of like, you might think it's just like this or like this, but what about this? And so that is definitely an expansive and breaking <laughs> <laughs> kind of dynamic. Transition is hard, uh, hard work. It is moving from one place to another. Sometimes for me, it recently it's been physically, but sometimes just mentally, a change of, a change of mind, uh, a change of heart. Um, in this continuing fight for justice, um, struggle against white supremacy, there have been uh, moments uh, especially within the past uh, year, the past five years, where it seems um, that no matter how public the images of violence against Black people and brown people, um, the violence persists. And so no one really cares. It's, it's a moment of transition, a moment of kind of like, if I continue in this work and no one listens, then I'm going to break. But then you find ways to push through. You find encouragement through other friends who are in movement, other friends who are committed um, to this work. And sometimes the encouragement has nothing to do 
it seems with with the with the work of justice it is just a work of self-care and of nourishment i believe god orders my chaos while i'm enduring it i don't necessarily see how my chaos how my life how um situations are being ordered but i but i trust um uh, that god has called me um and has uh enough compassion and steadfast love to sustain me through this journey. I went to a uh, college of the uh, ELCA, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And so while I was there, I picked up a lot of Luther. Uh, there are a lot of things who, that make up who I who I am uh, as a person of faith. So there's a little bit of Wesleyan in there. There's a little bit of Luther in there. There's a whole bunch of different things in there. I'm a Baptist. Um, by ordination, by traditioning. So there's a lot of things in there. One of the things I picked up from the Lutherans was a prayer that was pr that was printed in the Lutheran service book, a prayer uh, at the close of the day. The prayer simply is, Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but that your hand is leading and supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Amen. And this morning, we are grateful for the gifts of spirit, uh, the gifts of spirit offered by my dear colleagues that have been part of worship already this morning. We thank God for the gifts of, of creation, that can be renewing. And so the outdoor scenes that are part of worship today, I hope will help to renew you and remind you that you need time outdoors as well. And the gifts of parenthood, specifically motherhood, that were embodied in my colleague from First Congregational uh, Church of Loveland and seeing her with her precious baby uh, all of all of those gifts remind us that God is the great giver of all and God has gifted you even in the midst of our many griefs there are gifts God provides in spite of the hurt and the pain of those griefs which are very real amen but these are all gifts of God and so we give God glory in this the giving time today as we move into the giving time i ask uh for your support again thanking you for every gift of support you've already provided thanking you for who you are and that uh we're we all belong to god and thanking you for the gifts coming into the storehouse through the mail and on our website and uh we invite those gifts today as we do on each Sunday. And so we hope you'll be inspired by members of our congregation, just doing the will of God and the work of God in one another's midst. In
And so let us pray. Now, holy God, bless the gifts coming into the storehouse. Bless each one. Bless the gifts. And especially, oh God, bless the givers. Bless those who have it to give and those who have it not to give. That all together we might make the mighty work for you possible. That we might do that work together and apart. That we might do that work with the recognition that we are all ministers of the gospel together. That that all of us help one another to excel in ministry, to be ambassadors for Christ Jesus our Lord today. Bless by your Holy Spirit every good gift of time, of talent, and indeed of treasure. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. We thank you. Our giving address here at the church is 4879 Crown Boulevard, Denver, 80239. And of course, you can give securely on our website at www.ucmontbello.org slash giving. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you for every gift. Amen. Amen. And amen. Which brings us now to the invitation time. First, let me invite you to consider Christ. For those who have not accepted Christ as your savior, we have a way for you to make that next step for Christ by hitting that button in the chat. You can, uh, that salvation button, you can follow that prompt, that set of prompts. You can accept Christ as your savior into your heart. It's the main thing. And then you can join with us as we band together as Christian people serving God and learning the ways of Jesus Christ so that we can we can emulate Jesus and do the things that Jesus would have us to do. He said he'd give us the power as disciples to do what he did and even greater things than he did. So that promise is one we hang on to. In this invitation time, I also invite you into prayer. So let us pray. Holy God, I pray now for members and friends and those connected with our church, for the eternal soul of Sherry Murphy, a food bank volunteer who is being laid to rest this very weekend, oh God, and for the Murphy family, we ask your grace. For Sister Harris, we ask your grace for her health and her strength in a continuing way. For Paulette Tobias in Dallas, Texas, the sister of um, Brother Gary Cooper, we ask your grace. For the Felton, Johnson, and Curry families, uh, we ask your grace for the Massup and Garner families, and especially uh, today for Ray Washington Sr. We continue to implore you for your grace, oh God. We ask your grace for Maurice Wade in his grief at the loss of his mother. We thank you, God, that you brought now Linda and Denise and Marlena back from Florida, having buried Sister Higgs now and been a part of her homegoing service. Linda's mom, oh God, we ask your grace for them in their grief, the Wolf Oak family, the entire family, but especially for Linda and for Marlena and for Denise. For Cassandra Curry and Aaliyah, we pray. For Bonnie Smith, we pray today, grieving the loss now uh, that's still fresh of her beloved Charles, uh, we continue to ask your grace for each one in our congregation, each individual and each family, oh God, as uh, more of us have been touched in our families by this terrible COVID-19 uh, virus for Ed Garner Jr., for others who have been touched by this virus, oh God, we ask your grace and ask for uh, survival mercies uh, for, for, for those who, who even um, in these days uh, contract it. And, and, and we ask, oh God, for ways that we may know that we can continue to be safe um, even in these days and as we move forward. Today, we ask your blessings for the breathing we need to do all of us, for the rest of the seventh day of creation, the Sabbath rest, 
that you not only did yourself, but you encourage for us Sabbath rest. We thank you for that, O oh God. Help us to breathe. Then, O oh God, help us to push, to push together, to push in the same direction, to push towards and into that transition that is inevitable, that next transition, that next transition that represents all that is ahead, some of which we can't see, but you've seen already. And so we trust you fully. We ask your grace. We ask your leading for every leader of this church. We ask your guidance for every lay person and leader of this church, oh God. We ask for your mercies for those who've ever been touched by any ministry done by the United Church and with and through the United Church of Montbello. Continue, oh God, to guide us in these days, to keep us, to bless us, to nourish us, and oh God, to anoint and appoint us to keep going out into your world, to do your work and your will in your way. These things we pray in Jesus' name. We all said amen. Well, today you've had the full rich um, journey of worship together. Um, we've experienced it and I pray it has been a blessing to you. I want to invite you on Wednesdays you're going to get to know the next four Wednesdays, a woman by the name of Valerie Kerr. I want to show you Valerie today. And um, I, I, I want you to, to see uh, that uh, Valerie has um, authored a book that has gotten great traction. It's called See No Stranger. Um, it's a book a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love. I love the quote here. Anytime we worry, we're dreaming too big. We must remind each other that every unjust social institution in history seemed permanent until it was imagined otherwise. Um, over these four Wednesdays coming up, We'll consider passages from her book and reflect on them. And so I invite you um, to reflect with, uh, with me and uh, with one another. Uh, imagine a better world and how we get there together, how we all take responsibility for getting there and not depending on one or another, do it for us, but how we get there together. Um, and, and then then I, I, I just look forward to being with you for worship uh, right here on our UC Montbello uh, dot online dot church uh, possibility for worship in a continuing way virtually. Uh, <clears throat> no matter what, uh, no matter what next steps come, that we would continue to pray that this uh, offering of worship. Uh, might continue for all of those who would receive it and be blessed by it, and um, that it will energize more ministry, uh, more mercies of God, uh, more praise and glorification of God uh, than we've ever had, even in times when um, we were meeting live and times that will come again when we also meet live as well. So today I continue to solicit your prayers, even as I pray together with and for you this benediction. Jesus said, you ought always to pray and not to faint. Do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger beloveds of a living God. Do not pray for tasks equal to your powers, but for powers equal to your tasks. Then the doing of your work will be no miracle. Then you will be the miracle. Every day you will wonder at yourself and the richness of life, which has come to you from a living savior and a loving Lord, a Lord who loves you so much in Jesus Christ that he grants to you, he gives to you a peace that passes all understanding as you abide, abide now and always in Jesus' peace. Amen, amen, and amen. See you again Wednesday and next Sunday, 7.30 a.m. right here, Mountain Standard Time. Yeah.
Yes, I see the light. Yes, I see the light. 